What is up guys, this is another Monday Night Rewind podcast where we go back 20 years to the Monday Night Wars and cover episodes from 1997. And so this week we have Raw number 231 and Nitro number 111 and this is from October 27th, 1997. And so of course with Nitro, which we'll get into in the second uh, half or whatever, but this is the night after Halloween Havoc, so we had the events that went on there. And so that obviously affects what goes on in Nitro and then it's some of the stuff is brought up and mentioned in Raw, so that's why I wanted to mention that that is all going on. Um, so as usual, we'll start off with Raw and then move on to Nitro. Um, so Raw, uh, to start off, again, this is Raw 223 or 231. I'll say the numbers right here in a second. Um, this took place in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and the average raw rate or rating for Raw was a 2.3. And the show kicks off with Vince McMahon doing an interview in ring with the Nation of Domination, of course, with all the I'd say racist stuff, or whatever that went on last week. Um, that's why they're coming out to start off first and everything. Um, and so uh, they come out and they're of course questioning who did the vandalism, and then uh, with the vandalism along with the racism from last week, and you know Vince is, says he does doesn't know and that the nation wants to know who it was and he's like I can't tell you because I don't know but uh Fruk ends up saying because of course Vince, Vince apologizes for the stuff that happened but Fruk mentioned or says that you can't say saying sorry won't fix 400 years of slavery so again going deep into the slavery stuff and Vince again goes on to what he said last week where he says there's not racism in the WWF and it will not be allowed and uh so then The Rock starts talking of course as soon as he starts there's a huge massive uh Rocky Suck chant that of course spreads throughout the arena and everything and as he's talking and stuff the Heart Foundation ends up or they end up challenging the Heart Foundation to a fight next week and in response to that the Heart Foundation ends up coming out onto the ramp and they of course accept the challenge from the nation and they said that Canada isn't like America there is no racism in America we don't you know have people shooting each other on the streets we don't see collar and all that sort of stuff and um, that they say obviously you can't see what's actually going on here and this is all DX that did this and like they set it up looking making it look like we did it and that causes um, DX to interrupt on the Titan Tron of course they're like sitting in the back or whatever and Sean and Triple H are going on saying that they say that uh Brett's known as the Grand Wizard and that the uh, Heart Foundation is the KKK and stuff which of course our KK your Grand Wizard is a leader of the KKK and stuff and so Brett's that's why they call him Brett that and everything and uh they're saying that Brett's first uh choice of clothing was white hoods but they ended up going with leather jackets instead and that while spray painting the room or the nation's room the Heart Foundation was saying the inward word and stuff which of course that's really strong and <laughs> pretty bad stuff going on there and then uh that of course pisses the nation off and they go running up the ramp and start attacking the heart foundation and while that's all going on at the end of it when uh officials come out and get them all cleared out and they get the nation to the back and stuff brett gets up and he has sort of like an injured leg and stuff but although he doesn't really show it later on but um he had he was like limping and whatever at this point and then from there we go into our first match which is gold s coming out with marlena taking on triple h coming out with all of dx when they all come out of course sean goes right to commentary so he's joining them for the match um so in the actual match at one point uh triple h does a flip over the turnbuckles so kind of like it's like the flare flip or something but uh, it's obviously a little different as Triple H does it. And so, of course, he was thrown in the corner by Goldust. And then he does a flip. And then in the match, Goldust ends up punching Triple H in the nuts as uh, Marlena has the referee distracted. And then at one point, Goldust gets thrown outside. And oh, as Triple H is, like, distracting the ref and stuff, China goes over and starts attacking him. And she ends up uh, doing, like, a, uh, I forget what they call it, a, like, just sort of a slam or whatever to Goldust on the ramp. So, of course, on the steel ramp, whatever as they call it. Um, so she's kind of taking out Goldust there. And then back in the ring, Goldust ends up hitting a uh, bulldog, which he uses as a finisher sometimes. Um, he hits that on Triple H, but Triple H is able to kick out. And then uh, once again, Goldust throws Triple H into the corner. And Triple H does a flip over the turnbuckle out to the outside. But this time he falls out to the floor. And he's on the side over by Marlena. And she comes up and slaps him a couple times. And while she's doing that. Of course the refs um, over there distracted with them. Goldust 
has gotten her little gold purse and is in the ring, like holding it behind his back, waiting for Triple H to get back in to attack him. Well, China runs in behind him, pulls it out of his hand, and I think ends up uh, hitting him with it. And so once that happened, Triple H gets back in the ring, picks Goldust up, and hits a pedigree on him to get the win. And that moves then into another Jim Cornette rant. This time he's ranting on, ranting on the word icon, and this kind of plays in with the whole uh, Halloween Havoc or WCW stuff of Icon or Roddy Piper using the whole Icon shirt thing. Um, he mentions that people like uh, Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, and Macho Man are all possible icons, but Bret's too immature, or Shawn's too immature. Bret just whines about too much stuff, and Macho Man is just past his prime. And then uh, the, he mentions the um, Hogan versus Piper match that took place at Halloween Havoc the night before, that it was a horrible match and because both are old and past their prime. And then you got people like the under uh, Ric Flair, The Undertaker, and Stone Cold who don't go out protesting and calling themselves icons, so that'd make them the most likely candidates to be an icon. And then uh, how Hulk Hogan's name is or name is a household name, but so is garbage, and both stink when they get old. So I thought that was kind of funny because that's a good comment stuff. And so uh, that's pretty much how it ends with the whole garbage comment on Hogan. And then they move on to a WWF recognition ceremony of the Oklahoma legend so all the famous like wrestlers not all of them, but famous wrestlers from the H Oklahoma territory and so of course the first person they introduce or introduce or whatever is Jim Ross and then he takes over the ceremony and introduces uh, Bill Watts both the Briscoe brothers and then Danny Hodge so it's a nice little ceremony they did for the Oklahoma legends there and then we move into a match of Owen Hart versus Ahmed Johnson and this is for the intercontinental title um, um, so towards the beginning of the match, Ahmed uh, starts beating up Owen Hart on the outside of the ring. And then uh, Ahmed gets back into the ring to break up like a count out and stuff. And then Owen's just taking his time to get back to the ring. Like he's just out there like selling injury or whatever and stuff and just not getting back in the ring. And that's upsetting Ahmed. And so he goes over and grabs a hold of the Canadian flag and tears it up. And so that makes Owen mad. And so he gets back into the ring and they start fighting again. And then at one point, Owen ends up hitting a low blow on Ahmed, which allows him to get the upper hand in the match. And as this going on, uh, the nation domination ends up uh, coming out onto the ramp. And so commentary makes a comment. Uh, uh, do you think they're out here for Owen or Ahmed? Because, you know, because the whole Heart Foundation thing, they could be after Owen, but then they always have issues with Ahmed, so it could be him or either one. Um, then while they're f Owen and Ahmed go outside the ring and they're start or they're fighting again, and Owen takes Ahmed's injured hand and puts it between the ring steps and starts hitting on the uh, steps and everything. So obviously trying to injure the hand more. And then he grabs a hold of the Canadian flag, just the actual flag part, and of course wraps it around Ahmed's neck and starts trying to choke him within stuff. Uh, then back inside the ring, uh, Ahmed has the upper hand and he s hits a horrible looking scissors kick like. It's such a like slow and lazy like scissor kick and then he hits a following up with another horrible looking spine buster and uh, he's kind of getting ready to go for a pin on the or set it for the Pearl River plunge probably and as he's uh, waiting for Owen to get back up Stone Cold comes running in hit and stuns or hits a stunner on Ahmed taking him out and so Owens retains the title by disqualification so again Stone Cold's trying to keep or have Owen keep the belt so that he can take it off of him at Survivor Series. Then next up, we have a little commercial for the, um, I forget what Parker Brothers maybe, but the Karate Fighters and WWF's doing this whole like Karate Fighters tournament. And so this, as these things are kind of, if you don't know what they are, they're kind of like Rock'em Sock'em Robots, but they're little like Ninja Guys. We actually had a set of them when I was a kid, but they're just little like action figures you stick on the end of this like, I don't know what you call it, just like a long arm type thing. And on the one side of the arm, you have like a little like a knob that you just spin. And then of course the character's on the other side and it spins their thing. And so they start like swinging back and forth however you spin the knob and like they'll have like a loose leg or hands and stuff they're like real like floppy and so as you spin it their hands and legs fly up and stuff and so if you um get them close to the other guy and you hit him like i think it was a spot on their chest they would pop off of the um little arm thing and so they have a match jerry lawler taking on brian christopher and lawler ends up or jerry lawler ends up winning the match or the thing there and moves on i'm pretty sure it comes down to like him and sable or something then next up we have jr doing an interview in the ring with 
with mankind. And so mankind talks about how he'll face Kane, right? Because from last week, at the show ended with him challenging Kane to a match as mankind. And he mentions how he'll face the monster and that he's not afraid. And then uh, Sergeant Slaughter ends up coming out to the ring saying that he will not uh, sanction the match between Kane and mankind because of Kane's like health, something to do with his health issues or something. And that Kane is an un uncontrollable monster, so he uh, won't like sanction the match to be allowed with but it will anyways and then in response to that that makes mankind mad and so he puts the mandible claw on sergeant slaughter to end that set in the interview then we move on to hour two where we get ken shamrock taking on bret hart to start off for the wwf title um so as the match starts uh, shamrock starts off by working on brett's leg to be able to set him up for the ankle lock but brett's finally able to get the upper hand and so he starts um very early on he pulls shamrock out to um over to the ring post and puts the figure four thing on him again and then back inside the ring bret hart just keeps working over uh shamrock's left leg you know set for the pain of the sharpshooter and everything and then once again brett goes for the figure four uh, or again on the ring post or whatever but as like getting ready to set up for it, owen pulls his legs in and it pulls a uh, bret hart's face or whatever or face first into the ring post kind of knocking him out and then they fight outside for a little bit and then uh they start to get back in the ring but as they're doing brett brings in a chair into the ring so kind of introducing a foreign object there at one point brett, uh, shamrock ends up hitting a belly belly suplex on Brett but Brett kicks out of the pin and then Brett goes for a sharpshooter but Shamrock counters it into an ankle lock and Brett's like trying to reverse out of it or as he's reversing out of it they end up uh, slamming into the referee and it takes the ref out and then uh, as Brett has the or Shamrock has the ankle lock on Brett Brett starts tapping but since there's no ref nothing happens and eventually Brett is able to get out of it and uh, he ends up getting it, grabbing hold of the chair and hits Shamrock with it so he just starts hitting him a lot with it and then brett's able to get the sharpshooter on but um since the ref's not really up or whatever uh sean michaels comes running out and super kicks brett hart as he as soon as he gets the sharpshooter put on and so from there sean starts beating up brett and then shamrock uh starts going crazy or whatever because sean like interrupted the match and his chance to win the wwf title and so he starts going crazy and starts attacking sean as well and though and then because of that whole chaos or whatever officials come running out to start backing off uh ken shamrock and uh uh, then the of course the corresponding teams come out so dx come out to help sean and then art foundation comes out to help brett and so uh the officials are taking care of ken shamrock and get him down well uh, then sean and brett start going after each other and they have a big a whole pull apart thing where you know the officials and the teams are holding them back well then they get loose and they do it like of course three or four times or something and then officially then finally uh dx ends up grabbing a hold of sean and like picking him up so they're all like holding him up in the air and they just carry him to the back to um, get out of the ring then they go to a commercial come back and vince is interviewing brett who's up on the titan Tron, of course and he's backstage and uh, brett's of course complaining about how sh um, about sean and you know all the stuff he hates about him but saying that he will beat him at survivor series and that he will kick his scrawny butt so he likes to say sean is a scrawny butt for some reason i don't know why from there we go into our next match of the bl uh, new blackjack so um, blackjack windham and blackjack bradshaw taking on the new age outlaws so as the match is going on billy gunn keeps uh, sneaking into the ring at time and doing double team moves with road dog so they're just trying to cheat and get the upper hand and everything um then at one point bradshaw's beating up on road dog and he goes to bounce off the ropes and as he does that billy gunn has a steel chair and uh nails bradshaw in the back with it so taking him out and that allows road dog to get a pin on bradshaw and they get the win there and as soon as that happens i think they fight a little bit or something but the godwins ends up running out and they start attacking the blackjacks as well so hoping helping out the new age outlaws and then uh as the godwins are taking over on the blackjacks the outlaws go over and grab a hold of the blackjacks hats so their cowboy hats and just start destroying them and so like they rip the uh like the brims or whatever whatever the part that sticks out around the cowboy hat they end up ripping that off so they just have the like the part that sits on your head and then the brim separately and then eventually the headbangers run out to help the blackjacks and uh when that happens all the villains end up leaving the ring next up we have jr doing an interview in the ring with paul bear 
coming out with Kane. And Paul Bear mentions how uh, Mankind is just stupid and just in the way of Kane getting to Undertaker. But he says that Undertaker will live in hell until he faces Kane, referencing the uh, promo from last week where Undertaker said, you know, he's living in hell and stuff. Then next up, we have the DX backstage for a little interview that Vince questions him or whatever and stuff. And once again, they I don't really remember exactly what they talk about, but at the end of it, Sean ends up pulling his pants down again and... So like flashing his butt or whatever and Triple H puts the X sign in front of it but John keeps showing jumping up in the air to show his butt off to the camera and stuff and so again they're just doing that whole stuff then from there we go into a match of Mark Mero of course coming out with Sable and he's taking on Flash Frunk at one point uh, Mark Mero hits a moonsaw off the top rope onto Flash but is not doesn't get a pin or anything off that you think after a moonsaw I go for a pin but in response to that Flash himself ends up hitting a moonsaw off the top rope and goes for a pin but Mero ends up kicking out of it and to finish off the match Mero ends up hitting the TKO for the win and then next up we get a video of the JR interview that he did like a sit down interview with Jeff Jarrett and this is like part one and he's talking about how uh, he became Vince's vision and he pulled it off in spite of Vince to prove that you know Vince gave him a horrible gimmick but he pulled it off just to show Vince how good he is and stuff and uh, then mentions how he went to WCW but there he had no opportunity or no movement because he wasn't a part of Bischoff's clique and that they're at WCW their top six wrestlers are all over the age of 40 so he you know thought he could be a younger up-and-comer that going on there but then he uh, ends it off by saying that um, he ended up coming back because WWF's price was just too much of a bar or that WWF's price was just a bargain for him and so that they're lucky that he's there now or whatever and then our main event for the night which again is weird that's a main event this is Los Bariquas and it's uh, Savio and Miguel of the Bariquas taking on the Legion of Doom and so as the match is starting out uh, the New Age Outlaws are shown sitting out by commentary and like JR tries to talk to him or something but they just kind of ignore him and like motion him to go away and stuff but as the match actual starts um, as soon as as the LOD take off their shoulder pads and put them down on by uh, on like the edge of the ring or something wherever they put their shoulder pads uh, Billy Gunn goes running over and grabs a hold of them and runs back over to where they were sitting and of course by now the match is going on but the cameras keep showing the outlaws and stuff and so it shows them putting on the um, shoulder pads and then they have the top part so the actual part that sits on your head of the blackjacks cowboy hats and they're wearing those two so they're looking just like a bunch of idiots and stuff and then they get up and start like kind of like wandering around the ring and they're talking to the other two Los Periquas and then they're like messing with their or like doing stuff to the crowd or whatever on that on like the hard camera side or whatever and uh at one point miguel starts to throw hawk over towards the ropes over by the road dog or by the outlaws and but of course hawk ends up reversing it and so when miguel hits the ropes road dog thinks it was hawk and so he grabs a hold of the leg and trips him but obviously it was not hawk and it was miguel instead and so hawk is able to get the pin on miguel so they win the match there and then the lod notice that the um, outlaws are wearing their shoulder pads and stuff so they start chasing after him they get a back and they run into the back area and then the show ends with ahmed johnson an ahmed johnson interview in the back or in the locker room and he's just vowing that next week he's going to get stone cold for causing him to lose the intercontinental title and then next up we have Nitro 111 now and this took place in San Diego, California. And so this was a three hour Nitro so it was a special three hour event. And again, as I mentioned earlier, this is the night after Halloween Havoc so kind of like big stuff going on so I guess that's why that was three hours and for ratings Nitro had an average of 4.3 so I forget what was Raw so almost double again of what Raw is doing but to kick off the show Hulk Hogan and Eric Bischoff end up coming out to the ring and so of course they're just going on and acting like Hogan's the best person in the world by saying that Hogan beat Piper at Halloween Havoc but um and it shows a little like video or pictures and stuff of them handcuffing Piper against the ring cage and uh they were doing uh, Hogan was doing that with the help of Savage and Bischoff holding Piper against the cage and stuff and that he uh Hogan ends up challenging anyone from WCW to a fight and even includes Sting in that and then they do a whole little ad like promo type thing on Assault on Devil's Island which plays tomorrow night 
night. So Tuesday night back in the day, obviously not in real life. Um, so that's playing the next night. So they're going heavy on promo for that. And then from there it goes over to commentary and they're talking about how Hogan lied and that Piper actually won the match because he got, uh, won it with a sleeper hold on Hogan. So now here they're in their second match of WCW, Piper won once again with a sleeper on Hogan. And then they mention, uh, how, and I think show pictures and stuff too or something about how uh eric bischoff ended up beating up larry zabisco with the help of scott hall and uh so they show the picture of scott hall holding up eric bischoff and him beating up larry zabisco and then getting like a pin on him or whatever and then that moves into our next match of ray mysterio jr taking on dean malenko and commentary mentions how the uh, halloween havoc that ray ended up beating eddie for the cruiserweight championship which of course this is a famous match um so if you haven't seen it i would highly recommend it. it's such a great match between eddie Guerrero and ray mysterio just look at halloween havoc 1997 and uh you won't be um upset or you won't be disappointed in what you see if you like cruiserweight stuff um so of course with this match having ray and d malingo this was a very good match and there were of course a lot of cool excellent maneuvers going on here but as usual raven and the flock are walking through the crowd so camera has to focus on them even though they're have nothing to do with this match but at one point malik uh, Dean Malenko ends up hitting a gut buster on Ray off the top rope, which is look nasty. So that's obviously where you take someone like Ray in this case. Dean takes him down over his knee, like this his ribs and stuff. And so from that off the top rope, it just looked nasty. But uh, towards the end, Dean Malenko ends up going for a Texas. L- cloverleaf but as he's getting it on ray is able to counter out of it and into a roll up and gets the pin on d malenko and then fittingly from there we go into a mike tenay's report or luchador report that he does and uh this time it's on the lucha ma- luchador mask whatever as like merchandise so it shows like how masks are in stores and everywhere and you can buy them and all sort come in all sorts of different designs and then like some sort like the importance of them and stuff and then they also i don't know what it was exactly but showing like a bunch of luchadors talked about uh their like say family and stuff like that so kind of like family history and lucha wrestling and then from there we go into a nitro girls dancing on the ramp and they're in costumes and so commentary mentioned something about the village people never look so good or something so they're all sorts of different outfits i think one's like dressed as like a pilgrim and indian and stuff like that so not sure what they're dressing up as there but all the others were different then from there we're going to match of la parka taking on glacier and so with this match as you'd expect with glacier and stuff he's doing a lot of kicks because it's a whole like karate gimmick it's kind of like a Mortal Kombat character and stuff. Um, but at one point in the match, the park ends up hitting a pile driver on Glacier. And then um, a little bit later on, he hit, does, which is kind of cool, uh, he ends up hitting a corkscrew plancha on the Glacier on, that's on the outside. And I don't know exactly what happens like because of course with the parka he always uses a chair a lot and he's got the nickname of the chairman or whatever and stuff of wcw and he ends up setting up on the outside like setting a chair up as you normally would and uh he ends i don't know if he puts glacier on it or glaciers a stand there and he's expecting to like hit him onto or whatever but um he sets the chair up and goes up top to do a move onto glacier onto the chair but glacier gets up and uh, ends up grabbing a hold of la parka's leg and uh pulling him off the top rope and la parka falls out onto the chair so that's kind of a nasty bump just bump just free falling onto a chair on the outside is sounds painful um but then in the end glacier ends up getting the win with a cryonic kick which is just a super kick whatever that he does and he gets the win off of that then from there we get a mean gene interview with ddp up or starts out on the ramp but when ddp comes out for the interview he just immediately just walks right past mean gene and goes to the ring so mean gene follows him to the ring and he's talking about how uh ddp's mentioned of course at halloween havoc how he had a savage beat until a sting came in and attacked him with a bat and took him out or whatever which ddp says the rumors are and i'm pretty sure it's more than just rumor it was hulk hogan and dressed up as sting and stuff and so he accepts a match with hogan tonight as a part of hogan's challenge uh then we get from there ddp leaves and larry zbisco comes out so it's another interview with me gene with larry zbisco and it's mentioned how uh scott hall attacked him in the match last night so he had to get back at scott hall and then that um because of that he wants to 
face Scott Hall in a match, and so he has a contract holding up saying first Scott Hall is signed stuff. And so Hall and Six end up coming out onto the ramp, and Hall mentions that Larry Zabisco doesn't deserve a match with him if he can't even beat Eric Bischoff, but of course Bischoff had help when he technically beat him or whatever. And then uh, Zabisco's like, so what do you say we take the match or whatever? And they just end up like walking out, doing like the motion, like I uh, get out of here type thing, and walk to the back. Then next up we have a match of Stevie Ray coming out with Miss Jackie, and uh, he's taking on Lex Luger. Um, so throughout the match, not a whole lot happens, uh, but Stevie is giving Lex Luger a tough fight. So of course, probably with his big size and stuff, they're making it seem tough. And then of course, with Lex uh, complimenting Booker last week, they're probably just uh, trying to put over a little the um, Harlem Heat. But Luger does his two um, clotheslines um, and then uh, followed up with a bionic elbow and then he goes to pick him up for the torture rack but he's like having issues probably with selling injury or something getting him up into the torture rack but then they fight just a few seconds more and then Luger is able to get him into the torture rack and Stevie ends up giving up or whatever and so Luger gets the win. Then we go into a Raven promo and of course this is like a pre-film thing and he's just sitting in a tree and he's talking about whatever and I had no clue what he was talking about once again so he's just beat like I said exactly like Bray Wyatt just out there saying a whole bunch of stuff that doesn't really amount to anything. Then that leads into hour two which kicks off with Eddie Guerrero taking on Chris Jericho and so when Chris Jericho comes out you can notice that in the commentary mentions it that he has a injured shoulder from last night and they end up showing the like footage or whatever where he had a match with Gato and he fell like or was dropped like on his head and neck shoulder area and stuff and it just looked nasty and I'm surprised he didn't break his neck off of that um, but of course because of that injury Eddie starts attacking uh, the shoulder and keeps just doing that throughout the match at one point Jericho ends up sending Eddie flying across the ring with a released German suplex and so they I don't know how they did if Eddie must have jumped really hard or something but he went just flying across the ring. Um, Jericho goes to hit a moon salt or a lion salt sorry um, but Eddie is rolls out of the way so Jericho misses and then Eddie get, goes up for a frog splash but Jericho is able to get up and hit the ropes um, so crotching Eddie on the top rope. Um, at one point Jericho does a suplex on the Eddie and drops him outside the ring so again we're getting drops from the ring to the outside that aren't don't look very safe and stuff but they're doing them so what it, and they survive so I guess it doesn't really matter but Eddie ends up getting the win with a frog splash onto Chris Jericho who's lying on his stomach so he does the frog splash on Jericho's back but then rolls him over and gets the pin then from there we move into a match of Fit Finley so this is the first time I've seen Fit Finley but he's taking on Chris Benoit and with these two guys you get a nice brawling match and it looks like these two are actually fighting with each other you never know they actually could be because i know they're both people that were considered like tough guys and it just looks like they're actually like laying into each other actually punching and kicking and it just looks bad but um throughout the match they do a lot of fighting on the outside of the ring so i guess when you're doing just a bunch of brawling stuff doesn't matter if you're inside or outside but they do a lot of outside but Chris Benoit ends up getting the win with a diving headbutt, of course, off the top rope onto Finley. Then from there, we go into another Mean Gene interview, this time on the ramp with Ric Flair. And then Ric Flair mentions how to him, Henning is a dead man and that if Flair sees him the night, he's going to pay for it. And then he uh, challenges or mentions that he has a match with Macho Man tonight. And then from there, we go into Scotty Riggs taking on Raven. And Raven comes, oh, of course, from the crowd or whatever, from their seats. Um, he comes out with the flock. And Stevie Richards ends up getting up into the ring and with a microphone and says that Raven will only wrestle the match if it becomes a no DQ match and so St uh, Scotty accepts it and so uh, before the match actually starts so again Raven starts offering Scotty Riggs to join the flock but Riggs is like refusing to and stuff and so Raven's like fine and so they start the match and of course crowd start chanting ECW very early on and then short a uh, short time in Saturn on the outside ends up handing Raven a chair and so Raven sets up the chair, lays it down. I forget what he does, but he ends up doing a uh, top draw hold or drop toe hold onto Scotty Ray or Scott, uh, yeah, on Scotty, who then falls face first into the chair. And then so Rig starts selling his face really hard, like he has an eye injury. And my brother watched this with me, and I think he mentions that he remembers this because Riggs like starts wearing an eye patch or something, so it's sound that he like um, severely injured his eye or something. And so because of in, uh, Riggs' injury, the match is over. And so Raven just walks out and goes back into the crowd and sits down in his chair. That goes into a Nitro Girls dancing on the ramp. And this time they're not in costumes. 
I don't know if I mentioned that, if there was another one or not, but they're not in their costumes anymore. And then that goes into our match of DDP taking on Hulk Hogan. And this is sort of a big match because it's introduced by Michael Buffer. So anytime Michael Buffer's around, you know it's a big match. Um, so DDP ends up coming out with his taped ribs. And then the um, the match, as the matches go is on, or very early on actually, DDP ends up trying for a diamond cutter, but Hulk Hogan is able to escape before he hits it. And then, uh, of course, as his match is going on, which it's, I think if I remember right, it's pretty long and it's just a boring match because Hogan is just so boring but he's using a lot of heel tackets so he's doing a lot of slaps and uh right like rakes to the back and the eyes and stuff and then of course hitting a lot of poses and stuff but at one point Hogan uh hits the big boot and then goes for the leg drop but DDP rolls out of the way because we know if he hit the leg drop it'd be over for DDP um but a fake sting comes running out and attacks DDP um but DDP is able to get the advantage over it and hits the diamond cutter on it and then because of that the match is ruled at um DQ or whatever and so I mean after that the, all the NWO comes running out and they start beating up DDP and Eric Bischoff and Six grab a hold of the fake sting and they start like carrying him out and they're like they move real slow and then they like stop um kind of like at the end uh the aisle way and stuff and so I thought maybe that was like possibly real sting and so he was you know wearing like a mask again to make it look like he's the fake sting and then once they got away um up a while later he would like do the death drop um scorpion death drop on him or something but he never did but then the real sting actually comes down through the crowd and starts of course gets in the ring starts fighting off the NWO <clears throat> and they start you know clearing out of the ring but he ends up hitting the scorpion death drop on Scott Hall and Henny before the end and then that goes into hour three of nitro and it kicks off with disco inferno who's the tv champ taking on goldberg and so kind of like some background from halloween havoc disco ended up losing the match to miss jackie at home or at Halloween Havoc, which i just said and then uh, goldberg ended up interfering in the match between steve mcmichaels and alex wright who was deborah's wrestler or whatever that she chose and goldberg ended up interfering and attacking alex wright so as goldberg is walking down to the ring alex wright ends up attacking Goldberg from behind but Goldberg able, is able to hit the jackhammer on him and then he gets in the ring and so immediately spears and jackhammers on Disco Inferno but the bell never rings so he can't like pin or whatever and get the win but as soon as that happens Steve McMichaels comes running out and Goldberg is able to take him down and then security comes running in and grabs a hold of him and is able to separate the two so that's probably going to be our next match uh, at some point of Steve McMichaels and Goldberg. After that, Hogan and Bischoff come out to the ring once again, and Hogan mentions how uh, Sting was afraid to come out and face him while Hogan was in the ring, and that he challenges Sting to show up tomorrow night in Vegas, because Hogan will be at like a showing or some sort of thing or whatever for the TV show, and so uh, he'll have a contract there waiting for Sting to sign if he shows up, if Sting wants the match bad enough. And then that goes into the Steiners with Ted DiBiase coming out for an interview with Mean Gene, and uh, they mention how it's been a tough year for the Steiners but they ended up or were able to beat the NWO at their own game so they're obviously the champions right now and that there's having an open contract shot for the tag team champions or for the championship so if any teams want to face them they can and then that goes into a match of the Steiners taking on Public Enemy and so of course with the Steiners being who they are and stuff they're able to overpower Public Enemy and just dominate a lot of it but they're fighting at one point on the outside it's Rocco Rock and Scott Steiner and uh, Rocco ends up throwing Scott into the steps outside but back inside the ring the Steiners are able to get a top um, hit their top rope bulldog move on Rocco and get the pin so the Steiners win and that goes into another match of Booker T taking on Kurt Henning as this match is going on Miss Elizabeth ends up coming out to ringside or probably at the beginning or it's close to being something she ends up coming out to ringside so of course um, her kind of connection with Kurt Henning since Macho Man allowed him to use her or whatever and so she's just on the outside what well, one point she gets up on the apron and starts distracting the referee which then allows macho man to come running out and he hits an elbow drop onto booker t who was pinning kurt henning at that point of course the referee wasn't counting or anything because he was distracted and macho man hits the elbow drop and so that allows kurt henning to get the upper hand and he starts to do a pin on booker but as he's doing that 
Ric Flair comes running out into the ring after Kurt Henning. And of course the ref notices and calls for DQ and everything. And Ric Flair chases Kurt Henning to the back. And then it goes commercial and com um, comes back for commercial. And Ric Flair and Macho Man are fighting. I don't, I think they're fighting in the Iowa at this point. So they're, it just immediately as soon as it comes back commercial, they're in the Iowa fighting. And so they fight in the Iowa for a little bit and they go into the crowd and fight. And as they're fighting back towards the ring, um, right outside, Ric Flair ends up hitting Nick Patrick, the referee, but it's unknown whether it was an accident or real, but I think he was just like punching and stuff and ended up hitting him with his elbow and everything. Uh, then at one point, Macho grabs a hold of a microphone and ends up hitting Ric Flair in the throat with it. So Flair's, you know, like grabbing his throat and stuff like he's choking. Um, back inside, or once they're inside the ring, Miss Elizabeth at one point pokes Flair in the eye as he's over by the ropes or whatever. So she's again getting involved in matches and being dirty and stuff as well. And of course, as the match proceeds through, uh, there's a, a lot of fighting that takes place on the outside. Um, which I noticed a lot. Macho Man likes to be on the outside a lot. So I'm not sure what was going on there. It's just something I've kind of noticed a little bit in his matches. He tends to go outside a lot for stuff. Um, then at one point as they're fighting on the outside. Macho Man ends up climbing up the turnbuckle. Or the whatever post. And does a double axe handle on the flare on the, the outside. But flare moves and he ends up falling onto the guardrail instead. And then Kurt Henning at one point ends up come, or comes running in. And starts fighting with Ric Flair. And so the ref rings the bell because of the interference. And then. Macho Man hits Ric Flair with the US title and then does an elbow drop onto him. And the show ends as they're hanging Ric Flair, uh, as Macho Man's hanging Ric Flair up in the turnbuckle in the Tree of Woe, and the show fades to black. So, overall, both episodes were pretty good. I think this time I maybe liked Raw a little better. Probably definitely liked it better since it was a lot shorter because, you know, Nitro was two hours or three hours. And so I just hate seeing that time when I start the episode and it shows and I can see the whole time I'm like oh my gosh this is gonna take forever um but I thought was, Nitro was pretty decent overall because of the whole Nitro stuff fallout from Halloween Havoc is what I meant to say not Nitro stuff so that's gonna be it for the Monday Night Rewind podcast this week going back 20 years to the Monday Night Wars and this week we covered Raw 231 and Nitro 111 from October 27th 1997 so as always if you enjoyed this episode please be sure to leave a thumbs up for me leave any comments you have in the comment section or on apple podcast you can leave a rating and a review so you can do that for me and on youtube don't forget to subscribe to see more every weekend and we will see you next time